All right. Step two, we got this. We need to change this. It's on. We need the high load. 1471, that's good. We're on the C scale. C. All right, now we got to get our part, piece part. Here's our low here's a low carbon slug. Put that over here. And our bra off Now this is correct. Uh, pardon me? Which one is first? Pardon me? Which one is first? Which one is what first? What are you going to test first? We're doing, we're only doing one. We're doing the low carbon, which is a, a 1008. Alright? We're only doing one. We're, this is only case hardening. Uh, we don't case harden. This is not the whole thing. This is just one. Just to, because we did that case hardening and it came out, what, nine on the C scale? Yeah. Now, keep in mind that don't pay any attention to C scale readings that are below like 20 because the, the scale gets very inaccurate down there. So all we know is it's soft. Right? Uh, if you really wanted to know what its hardness was at that level, you'd have to switch to the B scale, the lower scale, which instead of a diamond penetrator, it uses a 1 16th diameter carbide ball different set of weights. It's a different scale. And you can look, you can just, you can just uh, Google uh, hardness conversion and you'll get a whole row of like Rockwell C, B, F. There, there's about a half a dozen Rockwell scales. Then you'll have Brunel and Pickers and and you'll, you can see exactly where they line up. So, you know, we, when you go through there, if you go through that uh, uh, conversion chart like that, and you'll see where there's a lot, just a line with no number. That means that there's no, no coral, no overlap, right? For those two or many, however many different hardness, uh, hardness scale. What's that machine called again? This machine is called the Rockwell Hardness Tester. You, you did go over it. It, it was. Uh, it was in your uh, hardness uh, module. So what we're going to do is to make sure we're uh, not fooling ourselves is we're going to run a uh, test block. This is a Rockwell. This is a certified test block. And you, we, did, we did this before. This is um, uh, 40, 45 Rockwell C. And it's going to do two things. It's gonna, we're going to check the calibration on this machine. Plus, we're going to uh, uh, load, push all these parts together so that Get good readings. Once again, we have to uh, apply the preload, which with this kind of semi-automatic machine, it actually has electric, elect, it has electromagnetic clutch on this. So when you reach the preload, it grabs this spindle and you can't turn it. If you really do it fast, you can overload it. But. Okay, first reading 38.9. Let's give it another one because that should be better than that.
and get this thing all loaded up. That's actually fairly close. These machines, this type of hardness testing in general is pretty variable, so it doesn't have real high repeatability because of the nature of the process. So, uh, huh? That 45? This is 46.2. So it's supposed to be 45, huh? Uh, is that why yeah. they call it 45? It's 45.3 plus or minus 1. So I'm going to say this is good. 45. Right? 45 plus or minus 1, and this says 46. Everything is, is looking good. So our machine is running. But you notice the first time I did it was low. That's because all these parts aren't pushed together good. All right. Now we're going to go with our test specimen here. And so what's the tolerance again? Plus minus three. One. Oh, on this block, this test block? Yeah. Plus or minus one. 45.3 plus or minus one. So you can tell right away that they're they're reading, they're trying to read the hardness to within a hundredth of a point. But, but the tolerance is one point, you know. So I got this, this machine. I just want to make sure that I don't have a clear one. Because that, would, that would really screw it up. One of those buttons says you can't file it down. What's that? It says you can't file it down. I don't know if it might who can't file it now? On one of those um, modules, I'm not sure which one. It's oh well, if if you if it's if it's real hard, it, it'll like our like when we did our heat treatment on our 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 W1, it came out to like 65. That's way that's harder than a, a file. So if you try to file it, you're gonna wear the you're gonna just ruin the file. All right, let's get take a couple readings off of this. And we know this thing, if if this thing reads above like 10 or 12, then <laughs> something's wrong. And the reason I'm use, using the C scale is because I don't want to have to switch when we harden this. I want to leave the same scale. Oh, yeah, 14. Yeah. Let's do another one. Just uh, get the repeatability. And you'll find that that you never you never rely on a single rock wall using a machine like this. You never rely on a single reading because there's so many little things that could be affecting that. You have to get at least three readings and average them. 16. 16.7. One more. So you notice that this is uh, cut off the same bar that we tried to do the, the case hardening. And that case hardening came in at 9 which means that we actually soften it from this state in our heating, which is not unusual because there's uh, cold working going on in this thing. Cold point nine. Okay, that's that's as much as we need. So we're going to leave this machine on and sitting here ready for us. And now, now we go to the welding shop. That rosebud head is good for post heat heating that, but it's, we don't need anything like this. Let's see if I can get another.
That is steadily seizing. Seizing around. I think it's more more Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that that looks pretty good. Now, so we want to heat this, heat this up, and then uh, when you come to heat it, I mean, you you, you want to stay away so it doesn't get too hot all the time. All right. Okay. So go ahead and just heat that thing up good. to leave your alcohol and your acetylene outside? Uh, yeah, probably not. No, the, you're not going to, the, the change in temperature is not going to affect the pressures in the tank. Uh, you got it? Okay. okay, so now I'm going to just put this in here. Yeah. From the bottom? Yeah. Good. Okay. Trying to stay away from back it off. So this stuff is gonna melt in here. This is what we want. Now this is not a short. We're gonna cook this thing for a while. The problem the last time is that we just rolled it around in there, and it didn't give it enough time for it. Back it off, back it off a little bit. So, so one of the more common ways of doing this case hardening is you, you pack the parts in a steel can full of carbon. A lot of times they use just hammer, they just crushed charcoal, pack it with charcoal, but then they put the whole thing in an oven and heat it, you know, red hot and let it sit in there for hours. And then they pull it out and then they have to clean it and then they have to re heat treat it. What we're doing now is is just trying to get the carbon to migrate into the steel. You can back it off some more. Back it off even some more. Okay, well, take, get it, take it away from there. We're going to always let it sit. But we're just going to let it cook in there. You're going to have to, we're going to, okay, it's, it's not time critical. Uh, this can actually cool all the way down. We're not going to do that. But we're going to uh, let it simmer in there. It's nice and hot. It's when, you know, the heat, temperature, and, uh, it, it basically increases the mobility of, of atoms, right? It opens up the crystalline structure of the steel and the atoms that are more energetic than carbon and they can scoot in they want to be in. So there's a, this is called a diffusion process and there's a, a natural physical phenomena for of diffusion, where uh, the world, the universe wants everything to be the same, right? That's a natural, so that if you have a concentration here and a, and a lack of concentration, the, the natural process is part of thermodynamics is going to want to make the whole thing uniform. And that's, that's the natural driving force. 
in physics. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to put that right there because one thing I think we found out is that it takes too long to I'm going to put that right at the edge. So I want you to just heat that up just where it's standing. When it gets good and hot, I'm just going to knock it in the wall. The difference between ice water and room temperature water isn't enough to make any difference. Oh. Now we're going to find out if, if our new method is worthwhile. Um, you said ice water. Well, it doesn't make enough difference uh, for this. <coughs> but I should point out to you that uh, when you're dealing with very high uh, alloy steels, like uh, tool steels, uh, D2, and with that have a lot of uh, alloys in them, and chromium and vanadium and you have what's called retained austenite. So these are these are air cooled or air quenched steels. I mean, you don't have, you heat them up. You don't you don't have to put them in a bath. You just put them on a stand and maybe blow some air over them, and that is enough to make them turn into a martensitic structure. However, at, even at room temperature, because of the nature and the the, the slope. The very slow uh, 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 quenching, you have retained austenite, which is, is soft, mixed in there. So what they'll do is they take that steel after they've quenched it, right, and they'll put it in a freezer at like minus 50 below zero, and let it sit, and that will that will switch the rest of the austenite into martensite. So you have a fully martensitic structure. And then it is, it's drawn back from there. All right. We got to go fish that out of there. Oop, that's, an, that's a bad idea in a weld shop. Don't touch anything. All right. Nothing up my sleeve. I'll find it. All right, so we got our little test thing here. We're gonna tie. See, I, I might have to. This is probably still hot. Oh yeah, good thing I didn't grab that, huh? So, so is there a relationship between a hot facet which is in the? Absolutely. It's called the TTT diagram. It's called the time temperature transition diagram. So the faster the heart fixes it. In. Well, basically hardened a, a compound. This stuff seems to have. A, Tendency. There's other co hardening compounds that don't generate so much junk. All right, let's see how we do.
20. 20. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to do some more. Twenty-seven. Ooh. That's a big yeah. Well, this sample is a little woogity from the heating in it. And the other thing is that this is uh, case hardened and we did I mean we thought we'd play it but the but the depth for like five minutes of, of soaking is probably not that thick and uh, the, instead of the C scale I should be looking at the superficial hardness 24 yeah so uh, you bear with me a second uh, you know these are the ends and I, I think most of the most of the carbon got into the sides. So if you give me a second, I'm gonna I'm gonna sand this down a little bit, and then we'll do it, we'll do it in the, with the uh, on, we'll, we'll, we'll test it here. But I have to change the angle. This is a uh, hardness conversion numbers for steel, and then here is. Uh, here is uh, Rockwell round correction charts. See, this thing is going to measure soft because of the curvature of the part. So uh, usually about for this, it'll be about two, two or three uh, points. Twenty-four, and now this is lower. What is, what is the, the graph? Say? This is a half-inch di diameter for on the C scale. All right, C scale says here Rockwell BGF scale C scales diameter three point five. Uh, the the uh, diameter result is twenty to about thirty. So uh, it says about. Um, 25 it's 3 so it's actually 27 right. so that's that's pretty consistent with, with what we read on the end 
it's just that you know it has to do with the shape and it's, you know the you know how well it, the the, the uh, compound that can migrate the carbon can migrate into the surface Thirty three plus plus three is thirty six. It's thir yeah, thirty four, maybe thirty seven. So uh what the takeaway here is that heat treatment and, and case hardening in particular in this kind of shop setting when you're not controlling everything, you're using a torch. It's kind of an art form. <laughs> Best to use like a furnace or something. Yeah, control temperature, and you have soak time. You can control the time and the, the, the ramp up and the ramp down. So what are we measuring right now? Same thing. Uh, this is another. Uh, yeah. Well, it's another just another point. Okay, that's really at the end. So I'm going to say that's probably due to the geometry. There's something under there, it's rocking or something. And the first one was low because I just put this in and it, it's got to seat it, you know. And you think you put it, you're in, but it, until it gets a load on it, it's not seated. All right, so we got it actually worked. It wasn't amazing, but had we been able to soak this properly in a furnace, probably for hours. And let it furnace cool overnight, you know, we would have got a much different result. Right? The other thing is that when, when you heat with a torch, especially oxyacetylene, there's always, you know, you're, you, there's always an oxidation factor going on. That's why we, we like to do it with a long tail flame, which is get, basically reducing, but. Um, so if, when you're, if you, whenever you're heat treating with a torch, and you have to do it like you're making your knives or something, make sure you have a uh, carbon-rich flame, in other words, a long tail, because that will envelop the gases, will be carbon-rich, and it will reduce the amount of oxidation, you know, the carbon leaving. Carbon likes oxygen better than it likes steel. <laughs> But give it a chance, it's going to go. That's why. That's why steel things rust, because it, it's it's uh, the, you know the oxygen oxygen it, it, it likes that and the carbon comes out of it. Here, yeah, pass that around. Um, yeah. All right. So that's thirty three point seven. What was that? Yeah. What was that? Is that another reading? 33.7 ounces. That, that 33.7 was a uh, diameter reading, and then you add, you should add around three points to that. Because uh, so, so the, the uniformity of the, the weight is going to be and all that. Oh, yeah, it all comes into it. Yeah. It's, it's, and yeah. the time and the temperature at which you heated it. See, that can all be controlled in a furnace kind of situation and with a good controller on it. Well, well, you know, sitting, you know, in, in your garage, you know, on the bench, those. Especially, and and the point is, this is a very low carbon steel. This is a, a 0 0.08 percent by weight, so it is basically ten times less carbon than what we call uh, carbon steel or eutectoid steel, which is 0.8. So it has very little carbon in it, and so it takes a while for it to soak in. We did the same test. First of all, remember what we did, just a medium with just medium carbon, which is uh, was 1018. So it's 0.18. So it's more twice as much carbon. We would got much, much better results. As a matter of fact, 1018 steel can be pretty much can be hardened. You don't get a good martensite out of it, but you'll get a bainite, which is harder and tougher. Alright, well. So, so if you had this thing, kind of, 
in that furnace overnight and then you get it right yeah. and piss the next day up even harder than it would that. be harder not only yeah it would be harder because the carbon would have soaked in to uh, a larger depth more carbon would have migrated into the part you know from the packing and then the other thing is that you would have you wouldn't have heat treated or heated it up with a uh, torch. You would have put it back into the furnace and, and, and taken it up to a controlled temperature at, in a in a in a neutral atmosphere, usually argon, uh, but a lot of them will use actually carbon dioxide as an atmosphere, right? For steel in particular, uh, carbon dioxide is. Uh, fairly inert, but if it does, I mean, it's, mo it's mostly car it's more carbon than oxygen. So, the carbon monoxide is another uh, single oxygen that they use, in uh, or they did years ago, or argon. Something, and, and they would control the control the temperature, control the heating time, and then and uh, basically the quench would have been rapid. They'd have a circulating bath. You know, I mean, basically. Thing, the water that's been uh, because what happens when you quench water quench or anything or you basically are forming gas bubbles the, the, the liquid right against the metal wants to boil and when it boils it's boiling is basically generating gas right so you have these gas bubbles and that is an insulation right so in really high end, you know, when they, they, they circulate the water real fast, it doesn't have a chance of the bubbles can't adhere to the surface. So there's a lot of other tricks. This is, this is what we did is kind of garage, backyard kind of thing. But it does work. Right? Right. And it's it's not it's not so important that we didn't get the maximum result, the important thing is if you understand the process and where we didn't have control. Alright, well. So more machine than more control. Uh, well, you have to control the process. And like you have, okay, so uh, an oil hardening steel, which is a small, is a low alloy, high carbon, so O1 is the O1, O2, right? Uh, you don't have to water quench those. You oil quench them in an oil bath, uh, and it's fast enough. And and the rule of, the rule of thumb in heat treatment of steel is you use the slowest quench method that gets you the hardness of the martensite structure that you want. Because the more rapid quenching, the more distortion happens because metal doesn't have time to uh, kind of normalize. You, you lock in this, basically, this, the uh, stress induced by the heat. You lock that in. And so, like a, an oil hardened part that is, uh, let's say, it, let's say it's something like, oh, here's a better example. So you're making, you know, you got machines, and you, and you have a part like this, and it has to be hardened for strength purposes. So you say, well, we got to make a lot of these. You know, oil hardening steel is much cheaper than the higher alloy steel, or even water, or high carbon. If this was high carbon, you know, like a W2, like we did, this thing would be twisted after you quenched it. Because of the geometry, it would be warped and twisted, right? And it may not work. I mean, if this was a, a, a piece of tooling, you'd have to make this thing way oversized so then you ground it back to the right size. That, so oil hardening, an oil, if you made it out of like a W, a W, a o, O1 or an O2, uh, you, you would have significantly less warpage on a part. And if you went to a even higher alloy, like an A2 or a D2, that is just 
you know, taken out of the furnace and set on a tray and cooled by air, you might not have any, you might not have any distortion. This, is a, this would be a very hard part to uh, heat treat in uh, almost any material steel because it's very because of the structure is very it, it's very this would be very prone to distortion. Okay, so let's see. I think that's the end of the, the lectures for this course. Next time we meet, you have the.